Welcome to The Process. It is Monday, November 22nd. I am Josh Engelman, and I'm here to break it all down. 10-game NBA slate. At least I think it's 10. I'm just going off the top of my head here. Yeah, it's 10. I was right. Anyway, 10-game NBA slate. We're going to break every single game down, go through all the rotations, figure out optimal lineups at the end. It's going to be a good time. Be sure to hit the like button as you get in the door. Helps me out a ton. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live. What's going on, everybody? It's good to see everybody. Yeah, uh, 2020 2012 says uh, 100K contest on FanDuel is $15 today. Bogus stuff right there. Yeah, they're running the super jump shot or some. It's got some sort of name to it. I don't, I already forgot what it is. Super fadeaway, super Superman. I don't remember what it is. Now I just now I'm looking it up because I don't want to be wrong. The normal slam is not the slam today. Oh, the super swing man. There we go. How could I forget? Um, so yes, the super swing man is fifteen dollars today on FanDuel, uh, which normally would be bothersome to me, considering the slam is the contest that I get into on a daily basis. That's my daily driver here. But uh, I will not be playing tonight. Uh, There will not be updates for contenders videos or anything tonight. I have a family dinner to attend. So I am off of Live Before Lock and won't be around um, this afternoon. I will be back on to Live Before Lock for tomorrow, though. So we'll be back and everything will be normal. But at least for this week, the only thing that I have that's going to change my schedule is uh, no DFS for me tonight. Uh, Aiden, should I trade? Uh, I don't know anything about season-long fantasy basketball. Sorry, man. Can't help out there. Whoa. Whoa. Kid Cloud Kicker, good morning. I won 300k on FanDuel yesterday. That's awesome. Yo, that's not like that's that's real money. Kid Cloud Kicker, congratulations. That is incredible. Incredible. Congratulations. Um Yeah, great great contests on Yahoo uh for Thanksgiving, that's for sure. We'll definitely be plugging those on most of the shows throughout the week. 
I, I wish the NBA would schedule around my time. Uh, that would be nice. Did I have JT? No, I did not. No, I did not. Yeah. Um, did not have the guy that scored five touchdowns. I sent Adam a message after the second one, like, huh, doesn't even matter now. Don't have to pay attention. Don't have Jonathan Taylor. Uh, it turns out he had more fantasy points from that moment on than he did at that point. So <laughs> there's also that. We got 10 games to do. We got a lot to work our way through. Joe Flacco, the 300K QB. Amazing. Amazing. So I think we should dive in because we do have a lot of games to talk through. And Mondays are usually the hardest because I've basically paid no attention to the NBA uh, over the previous two days. So coffee is in hand. Cheers, everybody. I hope you have a coffee as well or a tea or a beer or a water or whatever you got going on. If there's a Thanksgiving drink, maybe you have that. Uh, you know, like Christmas has eggnog. Maybe Thanksgiving needs a drink. I don't know what that would be. Um, but if you have it, drink it. Cheers. Rise and grind. Going to be a good one. Let's prep for today. Mm. There is something glorious about that first sip. Dennis, appreciate you. Nice Liverpool win. It was a nice Liverpool win. I also, uh, a friend of mine gave me a Liverpool program, the first program after they got, clinched their Premier League, So, and a little tiny bit of grass from Anfield. And I don't mean that like uh, the fun way. I mean like actual physical grass from Anfield. So I got that um, on Saturday when I went to the game. Very nice. Really excited to display it in my office now. Um, slowly working on redesigning this office and getting a little bit better view than just this bland ass gray wall and a couple things behind me. Uh, but in due time, it's going to take some time. Let's get into it. Uh, bang. There's the transition. Bang. We'll hit the Muzak. Get that playing in the background. But first, you know the drill, everybody. We got to talk a little bit about prize picks. They are the presenting sponsor of this video. If you use the promo code AWESOMO when you sign up at prize picks, you will get a 100% instant match deposit bonus of up to $100. So if you deposit $100, they will match that with $100. We've got tools on the site for free that will help you out. All of our NBA player props are available. You can know exactly how good they are. That should help everything that you're doing at prize picks. It's just going to be easier for you. If you're trying to build a bankroll, that is a great place to start. All righty. So 67 viewers. I was hoping it was 69, but this is still nice anyway. Uh, 40 likes. So you guys are doing great. Josh is Alvin part of your team? I don't I don't know who Alvin is. No idea who that is. I mean like Oh, no, not part of the team. Uh Like liking Jonathan Taylor yesterday is not interesting like he's good he's really 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 good really really good players do this sort of thing um he just didn't happen to look as good relative to salary as other guys around him but yeah when like the second most expensive running back has a big day i'm i'm not exactly shocked all right let's start it off brooklyn nets at the Cleveland Cavaliers. And the Nets are seven and a half point favorites. Uh, you guys don't need my calendar either. Seven and a half point favorites, 207 total. Where in the world did my other tab go? There it is. All right, close. Do I have that open already? I do have it open already. Why is all of my stuff gone? There we go. Finally. Good God. All right. Brooklyn and Cleveland. We'll start on the Brooklyn side. 
No Joe Harris, no Bruce Brown, no Kyrie Irving, no Nick Claxton. So this is sort of what we've been seeing as of late, other than the Bruce Brown piece. So we'll go ahead and get Bruce Brown out of that rotation. I'll probably take those minutes away from Cam Thomas and Dayron Sharp. So we'll have one, two... I mean, I th this should be pretty easy to look through. You know, we saw Durant sit the last time out. I don't think that's going to matter all that much. Maybe Cam Thomas is going to get in here. So we've seen Blake. 24 minutes seems just about right, but I'm going to leave it at 26. Because now with Bruce Brown out, I think that could change some things. LaMarcus Aldridge continues to just play basically the same amount of minutes every night. So I'm just going to go 24 and 24 with two extra minutes going to Blake. Or if we need more before that, we'll check it out. Patty Mills has to be in for 34. Harden in for 36. We'll get Durant back in for 36. That's going to leave me 14 minutes for somebody. Uh, Javon Carter got up into the 20s, which matters, I think. We're going to take him to 22. James Johnson minutes are going to... Maybe they're not going to come down. Why would they? Not really any reason why they should. Uh, all right, 12 minutes left. Durant, good. Bembry. Bembry played 41 minutes on Friday, eh? Okay. Uh, I think he's probably going to play 30. He's the kind of guy that just falls into this kind of time. And then I'm going to give Cam Thomas the other eight. I do have to update rates, I believe. Yeah, because these are in for Durant not playing. Which is not ideal. So let's delete Bembry, James Johnson, Mills, Aldridge, Bruce Brown, Harden. Delete it all. On to Brooklyn. And we need to just update rates. And this part's generally easy. There's not too much weird stuff going on with Brooklyn, at least for this season. So I don't have to make any sort of major changes. Pork or turkey for Thanksgiving? That would be turkey. I wish it were pork. <laughs> if we're being honest. I'd love to do some pulled pork. It's probably not the worst idea in the world. Alright, we're going to go 27.5 usage rate to James Harden. We get Aldridge in at 24. We get Kev in at 30.5. Blake Griffin, usage rate even lower than it's been. All right, so Bembry's going to play enough minutes. If I give Bembry 30 minutes, he's going to get enough time to matter. Um, usage rate might be a little too high. Patty Mills and Bembry are the last two guys I need to put in here. If Bembry's stepping into the rotation, that's going to work. Brooklyn looks good. Guess I gotta hit James Johnson too. With the old 12% usage rate. Alright, now we're good. From Brooklyn to Cleveland. I have no idea who's healthy for Cleveland right now, so this should be good. What do we got for Cleveland? So obviously no Colin Sexton, who had the knee surgery. Not awesome. Markinen back, Jared Allen back, doubtful tag on Chetty and Lamar Stevens, still no Evan Mobley. Okay, so this isn't going to be easy. Um, Let's just gut this rotation and start it from scratch. We're going to be here a while, folks, so buckle up. All right. Point guard minutes are pretty easy. We kind of know what Ricky Rubio is going to be doing. And seems to me like 
something in the neighborhood of 32 is going to be fine for Rubio. We'll get Darius Garland also out there for big minutes. I think 34, honestly, 36 might even be the play if this is competitive. Might not be competitive. So let's let's slot in 34 for now. And if we have extra, that's better. Uh, Jared Allen being back. Has not seen the floor since Saturday the 13th. So he missed three games. It's actually a really interesting time for him to miss. But got to assume he's just playing like his standard issue run. I'm going to give him 32. We'll give Kevin Love something around 22. We got... Markinen will be the interesting one because he's missed nine games. And like, you know, he was playing 30 minutes a game to start, but... Is that, can he do that right away? It feels like the answer is no. Which is kind of tricky. All right, Okoro is just going to play big minutes. This much we know. I'm going to give him 30 to start the other 30 minutes at shooting guard. So that leaves us 90 minutes for the rest of these guys. I'm going to say Markin in place 28. We're going to say Dean Wade continues to play his 30. At least for right now, especially with no Chetty. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know if it, it being close two days ago makes it more competitive now. Uh, Kevin Durant is playing in this one. <laughs> so, seven point, they're seven point dogs at home. It's the. You know, I mean, it's better than being Oklahoma City, Houston, Orlando in those scenarios. But All right, who are we missing now in this rotation? I guess Dylan Windler is probably going to be in for like 12 minutes. And that leaves me 20 for Denzel Valentine. I guess that's right, right? Because Ed Davis is done, though. He's not playing any longer. So let's give Den Dylan Windler 16 and we'll give Denzel Valentine 16. I don't know if that's how that really shakes out, but it won't matter on a 10-gamer. All right, we can look at this first game now. So Brooklyn, first game took 17 minutes. You can always tell on, on Mondays, I just don't have the rhythm yet. But we'll get there. James Harden on FanDuel for 10,100. I have some interest there. Uh, both of those guys, Harden and Durant, a little bit too expensive on DraftKings. Uh, DeAndre Bembry is 3,100 on DK. We're going to talk about him as a value play throughout the day, I would imagine. But 30 minutes is probably a lofty goal for him. That's sort of just assuming he starts. On the Cleveland side, not a lot here. All of the pricing seems to be pretty efficient, especially with Allen and Markinen coming back. You know, you can get to Garland or Allen or Rubio, and I think all of those moves would be reasonable, but there are no priorities here. So we're going to move it on to the next game, and I'm going to assume that there are priorities here. This will be Charlotte four-point underdogs in Washington. Yeah, Theodore, um, Bembry got more minutes because Durant was out, but we've got no Bruce Brown for today. So I, I think Bembry is a more natural fit into that sort of spot. Uh, on the Charlotte side. So still doubtful on PJ Washington. Somehow 27 people for Charlotte are in the G League, but this should be a pretty easy rotation to project. Because other than a doubtful tag on P.J. Washington, we got nothing going on here. And these guys don't really rotate their minutes all that much. Other than Mason Plumley's minutes being pretty weird. Um, which I'm going to take him down 
another minute to 26. That makes sense. Nick Richards now back out of the rotation. 18 minutes to Jalen McDaniel seems fine. So 26. We'll go 16 to Jalen McDaniels. Who's playing the five in those minutes? I guess they're going to like a Bridges at the five type lineup. Now I just kind of want to know that. So what's the last Charlotte game? Atlanta. Who's playing the five when Plumlee's not out there and McDaniels isn't out there? So this stretch. Ubre, Martin, Ball, Bridges, Hayward. So they're just going five like-sized wings. So it is sort of Bridges to the five. Good information to have. We got Gordon Hayward in for 35 minutes. Easy. Easy game there. 34 on LaMelo. That number needs to go up, finally. That can go to 35. Uh, 32 on Rozier seems fine-ish. Kelly Oubre, I have in for 26. Definitely need to bump that a bit. Um... Maybe 27. Cody Martin in for 24, but he's played an average of 28 for the past four games. So at the very least, I got to give him 28. And that leaves me five additional minutes. Looks like Ish Smith is the type of guy that gets those five additional minutes. Don't care what position they go into. Chat, you, 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 all the chats riled up today. See what happens when LeBron does something? All right, Charlotte's in the books. Uh, no rates to change. This is just going to be normal stuff. So we're on to Washington. And this is a pretty reasonable rotation, too. Do they have anybody out? Uh, no Rui, no Bryant. Bertans questionable. I'll believe that one when I see it, since he's been out forever. So, ah, uh, this was a Dinwiddie out game. We got to start this one from scratch. All right, Dinwiddie in for thirty. Uh, we'll say Howell Neto backup run. Beal in for thirty six. Aaron Holiday backup run. KCP in for 29. Somebody else backup run. Montrez Harrell and Gafford will continue to split the minutes. I'm going to go 25-23. 20, mm. All right, so that's two. Uh, we got to go Kuzma. We know what Kuzma's doing. He's playing, call it 31 minutes a game, maybe 32. Well, 32 feels a little bit safer. Then we get Denny in for 22. Final 13 minutes go to Corey Kispert. Bing. Done. Easy. Do need new rates, though, for Washington because I have these in for Dinwiddie being out on. I don't know, last Thursday or Friday or whenever the hell that was. So, skirt everything out. Although I still had Dinwiddie's rates in, so maybe I didn't need to change it. Still easier. Uh, Beal in for 33% usage as usual. Spencer Dinwiddie in for 23% usage. Normal. Kyle Kuzma in for 20% usage. Montrez Harrell in for 21 and a half. Daniel Gafford, the only other person we need to... Oh, I, I forgot to tell you guys. I added a little bit of a feature. So... What's on the screen won't matter for you guys right out of the gate, but I added a little thing for myself, so I might as well talk through it. I have the boom percentage per $1,000 here for FanDuel and DK, and then any guy whose name highlights in green basically says that they can be playable based on that boom rating. So it allows me to move quickly through the rates because I don't have to prioritize setting 
like usage rates or assist rates or anything on any guys that aren't going to be relevant. So this will allow me to like clean this up a little bit faster than I normally would. Surprisingly, KCP isn't there, but it's not like I have any changes to make. So we've got Charlotte and Washington in the books. These are the two seven o'clock starts. For Charlotte, LaMelo at 9K on FanDuel continues to look great. He's 10-2 on DraftKings. Everybody on the DraftKings side outside of Miles Bridges at 8,200 looks pretty similar. Yeah, Cantor, you know it. Hooray for conditional formatting. Bridges and LaMelo on FanDuel are the two priorities from Charlotte on Washington. Beal for 8,500 on FanDuel and 9,300 on DraftKings. And then that's probably it in terms of anything really interesting. All right, two games down, eight more to go. We are five minutes away from the top of the hour. 122 viewers, 66 likes. You know the goal, 100 likes by the top of the hour. Don't know how viable that's going to be today, but it is a nice Monday. It is a holiday week if you want to hit that thumbs up. Sherman, Anderson, Rise and Grind, good morning. Um, Oklahoma City at Atlanta. Thunder are 11 point dogs, 212 total. So we'll start with Oklahoma City, where who the hell knows what they're doing because this team doesn't care about anything. Uh, Q tag on Shea, which is clearly important. Trey Mann has been sent to the G League. So that's interesting. All righty, OKC. I hate this team so much. Clearly, we leave Shea in. We don't really have an alternative. Um, 24 minutes for Jeremiah Robinson Earl. Played a little bit more than that these past two times. Um, feel comfortable going to maybe 26. Twenty-six seems okay. We'll take Isaiah Roby's minutes out and give those to Derek Favors. Um, doesn't appear that Muscala and Favors are playing on the same day. So if I have Derek Favors in, oh no, they do. When it's not a back-to-back. -back. Uh, Baisley in for twenty-eight. That needs to be thirty. All of this is just truly awful. Uh, Poku, his minutes are down quite a bit. We'll take him down to 13. Kenrich Williams in for 20. Seems fine. Ty Jerome in for 13. Seems fine. Aaron Wiggins doesn't need those three minutes. Josh Giddy in for 30. So let's do something like that. And then I got 33 for Dort. So I have 13 minutes left over for these guys. Who the hell am I missing? Oh, it is Aaron, it is Aaron Wiggins. 13 for Wiggins. Done. In. I'm just going to assume that works. Yeah, I know. Dennis, I know. Two for three, though. Uh, I'll take the two for three on, any, on the trifecta. That's going to be a new gimmick moving forward. All right, so OKC is good. I don't have any rates to change. Atlanta side is, of this game is going to be pretty interesting just given what they've had going on and the fact that it's Oklahoma City. So uh, Q tag on Bogdanovich. No Hunter, no Okongwu. So everybody should be good to go here. I don't think that I even really have major rotation changes to make. We got Trey in for 35, which honestly I'm going to bump to 34. Um, Capella for 30. 31 probably should just be 30. Although 30 now, 31 will hold that. John Collins in for 32. That actually, I think, needs to be 33. Solomon Hill has been out of the rotation, so we're gonna need to reappropriate those minutes. But we get John Collins to 33. We've got Gallo in at 23. I don't really feel comfortable about anything with Gallo, but we're gonna let that go. Cam Reddish. Has played 25, 27, and 27 the past three games. I got him in for 24. I got to at least take that to 26. 
Bogdanovich in for 30 can hold. DeLon Wright in for 14 can hold. Kevin Herter in for 30. Should actually probably be 32. Um, so let's do that. Oh, that's backwards. Uh, 20 and 6. So three minutes left over as spillover. We'll just give that to TLC because it won't matter. Rates should all be the same for Atlanta. Don't think we have anything major to change here. Trey Young in for 33% usage. Good. Collins in for 20. Good. Kevin Herter in for 17. Gallo in for almost 17. We got Reddish in for 22 and a half. Is that too low? No, that's fine. Bogdanovich, 17. Capella, 16. And that locks Gallo into 16 and a half. So everybody fits there. OKC and Atlanta. On the Oklahoma City side, so Shea is 7,600 on DraftKings. Cheaper than he is on FanDuel. He is going to be very popular if he is able to play. Um, Not much else after that. It's like Dort and Giddy. N no priorities. On Atlanta, I really like Kevin Herter for 4,400 and 4,200 across both sites. These guys look a lot better on DK than they do on FanDuel. Trey Young for 9,400. Trey Young's a much better play on DraftKings than he is on FanDuel. Um, John Collins looks decent on DK. Power forward center, 7,200. Uh, Bogdanovich, if he plays, 4,500 on DK. We can start looking at the summary tables now. So we've done three games. One, two, three. We've done three games. One, two, three. So on FanDuel, best plays so far. Ball, Harden, Beal, Herder, Bridges. On DraftKings, Herder... Trey Young, John Collins, Shea, Bogdanovich if he plays. Not a lot, though. Like, not a lot of good. Just a lot of passable. All right. Houston and Boston. Basically the same game. One shitty team against a solid East team. For Houston, I have no idea who's available or not. I didn't know Garrison Matthews was on the team until recently. Uh, Q tag on Kevin Porter, and that is it. So at the very least, this should be pretty easy. Uh, Porter, though, has missed the past two games. Let's read his blurb to see how close he is. So on the Houston side, Kevin Porter. Chance that he returns Monday. Not a lot to talk about here. So we're going to uh, we're gonna just assume that he plays. He's been out. His la the last time he played was last Monday. Hopefully, a week away will help. So let's scratch this entire rotation. We'll pop Kevin Porter back in there at, I don't know, 31 minutes. We'll say DJ Augustine probably plays a little bit, but I'm going to put his minutes in there last. Let's get the center situation straightened out first. Daniel Tice... He just plays 24 minutes. Like, that's that's just... It is what it is. Christian... Oh, I gotta get Shingun in there then, too. Um, Shingun, probably, like, 18. We'll do 6 for Wood. Plus another 26. Hmm. Uh, yeah, Adam, I, I disagree with you on that one. You should be a fan of Green as a real-life player. Wow, Eric Gordon playing big minutes in Kevin Porter's stead. All right, so let's give Jalen Green that next chunk of minutes. He's averaged 32 over his last chunk. That seems about right to me. Yeah, if you look, no one had a Scotty Barnes over Jalen Green take pre-draft. You can't have one after a month of NBA games. Mobley, I'm fine with. 
You want to say that they could have taken Mobley over Green? Uh, there's no issue there. I, I think that top three is fluid. You can't take Scotty Barnes ahead of Jalen Green. Too early in that take. You can't you can't rewrite the history this fast. It's not how it works. Daniel House, Augustine, Garrison Matthews is just sort of playing. I guess I need to give Eric Gordon some sort of chunk of minutes. We'll say 29, 30, 29 maybe. Yeah. So Jay Sean Tate is going to play his sort of 28. SMP. Barnes outside the top five. Eh, eh, eh. I bet on him to go fourth. I knew what was what there. But I, I mean, look. Uh, look, Barnes just, like, Toronto has rehabbed w long wings with bad shots before. See OG Ananobi and Pascal Siakam. So I understand getting Barnes as that sort of project. I loved the idea for the Raptors. That's why I was willing to bet it. But, um, yeah, pre-draft, there were only three options at the top. And if there was a fourth, it wasn't Scotty Barnes. It was Jalen Suggs. Which also doesn't appear to be looking great so far. All right, so I got to give Canyon Martin some sort of chunk of minutes, which means Jay Sean Tate is largely playing at the three. So Kmart, I don't know, 16. And then we have 30 minutes to split between Garrison Matthews and DJ Augustine, I guess, and then potentially more to Kevin Porter, but I don't necessarily like that coming back. I guess I also need Daniel House minutes. Maybe. So let's give DJ Augustine 12. Garrison Matthews 14. And then we'll just do like a four spill over to House. Uh, key piece there for Green, though, is that Green's skill is the skill you're looking for in a playoff scenario. The ability to create your own shot at high-level usage is a playoff skill. So Mobley is set to look... It's not surprising that Mobley looks better now because of his defensive chops and his size than Jalen Green does. Jalen Green is a long play for the playoffs. It's a balancing act. All right, I think we're good for Houston. 7.08 right now. We're going to hit that mark shortly. I don't think I need to change rates. I think I left Kevin, like all the other people's rates where they should be. So we should be fine there. Not a lot to like for Houston. No surprises against Boston. Do I agree on Cade? No, I mean, all the people that have been saying fade Cade for the past two and a half weeks are stupid. We've been saying it on the strategy show every day, basically. It was a terrible take from the beginning. I don't care if he... He could, he could shoot 0% from the field. If he's going to shoot... If he's going to have, like, 27% usage, you just... Jam him out there until the shot goes in. Yeah, but here's the thing. And I love Evan Mobley. I think he's been incredible. He's not positionless. He's got one position, basically, for right now. He can guard up and down. Like, he, he sort of has that, but he's not there yet. In a couple of years, when he adds some strength, we'll see. But the... Evan Mobley needs to be able to be strong enough to play the five when it matters. That's how he gets to sealing Mobley. Seems like he can do it, but it's an interesting frame.
who's leading rookie of the year currently? Gotti Barnes, probably. All right, let's finish off Boston. Everybody in for Boston? Yeah, also Cantor is right. It's November. All right, I'm just going to gut this rotation and start it from scratch. It's just faster. Uh, Robert Williams in 29 minutes. Horford, backup center. Um, plus another nine minutes. We get Horford plus another 10 minutes. So up to 29 on Al Horford. Actually... They get the 30. Dennis Schroeder in. So Jalen Brown is just like officially in. Okay. Good to know. Dennis Schroeder in for, we're going to say 30 minutes. Backup point guard run to someone, but let's get the other two guys done. We get Tatum in for 36. We get Jalen Brown in for... Ooh, 32. Just be safe about it. We got to give Grant Williams his minutes. So he's in for 12. The rest of this really shakes itself out. Josh Richardson. You know, 18 maybe. Marcus Smart in for 32. So we don't have too many more to do here. Um, 21 minutes for some sort of combination of Aaron Neesmith. So 10, 10 to Romeo Langford, done. Oh, that is easy. I, th I think I stuck the mark on Boston. Do have to change rates now that Jalen Brown is back. Should be a quick fix. So this gets so much easier by the end of the week. It's insane. Seven twelve. We've got like six games to go. We're gonna be doing this till eight o'clock. So if you're here, oh, somebody just hit the like button. Got us to a hundred. That's outstanding. Uh, Doug. I got. I started playing DFS in 2013. I actually have a screenshot. I wonder if I can get that on the screen. Um, I built a one lineup optimizer in Excel for NFL Sunday eight years ago, I believe. Yeah, eight years ago. And I optimized into Mike Glennon and Colin Kaepernick as my two starting quarterbacks. I think that was on Draft Street. All right, Tatum usage rate 32, Jalen Brown usage rate 29, Marcus Smart usage rate has been quite low, 15, Robert Williams, he's the guy I need to change the most, uh, we'll do 12 and a half, rebounding rate is minuscule, that matters a lot, as does the minuscule assist rate. Uh, Schroeder and Horford, and then we're done. So Boston done now. Houston already done. I think we're getting through most of the garbage. On the Houston side, no priorities at all. Clearly, you can play wood and green. That's fine. On the Boston side, I, I like Tatum for 10K on FanDuel or 10-1 on DraftKings. Uh, that's probably it outside of $6,100 Robert Williams. At some point in time, he's just got to make a shot. So we've got <laughs> six games to go. The first four have taken 45 minutes. So we, we move on to my Indiana Pacers. Three and a half point dogs in Chicago. 208 total. And... For Indiana, just no TJ Warren. So standard issue Pacers rotation, apparently. So 
So I don't even really think we're going to make many changes here. Although Chris Duarte playing limited minutes in both games is kind of surprising since he's been back. Um, should he be getting less? I don't think it's going to matter. I think 36 for Brogdon. You know, maybe we make that 35. Keelan Martin gets another minute. I don't think we have a lot of changes here. Hmm. I, I think I have to just maintain the rotation I've had. These last two games just don't feel correct. It is going to lead me to get to more Karis Levert than I want, but that's fine. All right, on Chicago. What do we need to know? For the Bulls. Uh, one more game without Vooch. Looking like he's going to be back after that. And these are going to be pretty easy changes. Uh, Tony Bradley can certainly come down in minutes to... Maybe like 18. We know Derek Jones Jr. being in at like 21 works. Which means that... DeMar DeRozan is nominally the five a lot more than you would think. So that's 27. Yeah. God damn. Levine in for 36. DeMar in for 36. Lonzo in for 36. Caruso in for 34, we'll say. Uh, Kobe White's minutes are starting to go up. We've got Javante Green in for 20. I could probably make that a smaller number if I needed to. Just soon move fine. Everything else is fine. All right, so for Indiana, great prices for Indiana on DraftKings. Um, not a ton to love on FanDuel, but $7,300 Brogdon on DK, $700 cheaper than he normally is. Uh, Miles Turner is $1,000 cheaper than he is on FanDuel. That seems fine. Karis LeVert is 6K shooting guard small forward. I think that looks pretty good as well. So, lock, I, I like some of these Indiana pieces a lot more than I like some of them on FanDuel. For Chicago, a little bit more interesting on FanDuel now, but just as good on DK. We've got DeMar, 8,600 on FanDuel, yes. 9,100 on DraftKings, where he's only power forward eligible. That's a tough sell. Levine is 8K on FanDuel. Love it. 9K on DraftKings, still fine. Lonzo looks okay at 6,700 and 6,900 across both sites. You can still get to Caruso. Halfway through it, we're on to Orlando and Milwaukee. There's another tire fire game. Since Orlando is dreadful. Oh, that's a great rotation for the last time. I, oh, my God. It's terrible. So, Q tag on Cole Anthony. No Isaac. No Fultz. No MCW. Gary Harris. Perpetually questionable. This right here is just gross. So, I don't think that we have any other thing to do other than just expect them to play their normal run. Um, so, I got Cole Anthony in for 34 minutes. 26 for Jalen Suggs, 29 for Mobamba, 30 for Wendell Carter Jr. That's probably too high now. Eh, actually. That's what they want in a competitive game. Terrence Ross's minutes are starting to climb more and more, which I think is interesting. Get him one more minute. Franz Wagner in for 32. Let's make that 31. Orlando's rates will just stay the same. I don't have any changes. They could change if Cole Anthony is out, but for right now, I think that's fine. So we'll go to Milwaukee, another team where I... Unless I'm just giving Chris Middleton a couple more minutes, I don't think I'm changing anything. No Brooke Lopez, no DiVincenzo. Okay, no Semi, so that does matter a little bit. Not too much, but enough that it's just going to turn into Rodney Hood, I assume. Uh, Chris Middleton has played 30, 32, and 30. I probably need to make it 34, but this feels like not that spot. So I'm going to go to 33 on Drew. 
I got 22 in for George Hill. Jordan Wara is now out of the rotation. That's an interesting development. Um, we're going to give Rodney Hood those 15 minutes. Is it just Thanasis now? Yeah, 16 to Thanasis. Portis at 28? Nah, Portis at 30. That makes it easier. We'll go 16, 18. Bang, done. Milwaukee done. This game done. Orlando. 160 viewers. We're over 100 likes. God, I love this show. Thank you for being here, everybody. Cheers again. Oh, I'm out of coffee. No cheers again. Cheers, metaphorically. Wendell Carter Jr., 5,800 and 5,700 on both sites is the best play for Orlando. Cole Anthony is the second best play if he is in. Franz Wagner for 4,100 on DraftKings is a value option. On the Milwaukee side, clearly Giannis is a play. 11, 7, and 12K. I don't know if there's enough value out there to really unlock him yet. Uh, Drew Holiday, 7,400 and 7K. Has not been great so far this year, but I'm at least a little interested. Let's do something like that. Trim these guys a bit. Middleton on DraftKings and FanDuel is okay. Bobby Portis is 6,300 on FanDuel with power forward center. That right there is one of the better plays we're going to find. Jerry, I already drank my coffee. We'll add the next three games in here, see if we have any major changes. Top plays across both sites. Giannis, Wendell Carter, Zach Levine, LaMelo. That's all on FanDuel. Giannis on DraftKings, Wendell Carter, Jason Tatum, Kevin Herter, Malcolm Brogdon. All right, four to go. Minnesota and the Pelicans. Minnesota, two and a half point favorites in New Orleans, 213 and a half total. On the Minnesota side, Q tag on Nas Reed, Q tag on Josh Koji. I don't think that I'm going to have to change anything here. Other than maybe giving Jared Vanderbilt two more minutes. He seems to be pretty firmly playing like 25 or so a game. 37 for Edwards. We can make that 36 now just to be not crazy. 33 for D'Angelo Russell. I like 36 for Towns. I like 32 for Beverly. I don't love. Make that 31. Actually, or make that 30. Minnesota's easy. New Orleans, obviously no uh, Zion yet. Q tag on Devontae Graham. He definitely missed the last game that I played. I'm going to assume he missed the weekend game as well. Yes, he did. Do we have a blurb on Devontae Graham? Because we do want to know Devontae Graham. I almost went to Charlotte. Uh, still almost went to Charlotte even after I recognized it. Left foot soreness. Didn't play Friday and Saturday. I'm going to assume that he is back in. So let's yank the minutes on everybody else. You know, let's get all of that out of there and all of that out of there and then that. So Graham back in for his 32. We got Brandon Ingerman for 36. We got 33 and 15 split for Joe Val and for Jackson Hayes. Backup point guard run. Uh, you know, anybody that we want to say is the backup point guard will work in this spot. We're just going to call it Sadoransky. That lets us give Nikhil Alexander-Walker 28 minutes. We go to... Who's next? Um, hmm. Trey Murphy minutes have been so weird. If I give him those minutes at the backup four, give Josh Hart 34. Give Herb Jones 
Maybe I don't give Murphy any of those. Maybe it's 24 to Herb Jones. 18 to Garrett Temple. And like just spill over to Trey. Yeah, that works. That makes more sense. I don't think I have monstrous rate changes to make though because I think I left Graham's rates alone. Yeah, I did. All right, so this game's in the books too. Uh, Minnesota. I assume people are popping. I've been getting a lot of Minnesota lately. Yeah. Anthony Edwards. 7,900 on FanDuel, shooting guard, small forward. 7,400 on DraftKings, shooting guard, small forward. Definitely my favorite play in this game. Um, Towns for 9,500 on DraftKings, my second favorite. And then Russell, just third across both sites. On the Pelican side, ooh, a lot to like here. 8K Joval on FanDuel. $7,700 and $7,900 Brandon Ingram. Ingram with shooting guard small forward is awesome. Uh, and then Josh Hart, 5,300 and 5,500. So I like those top three guys here for the Pels. Three to go. Phoenix and San Antonio. If you just thought about this game, you would immediately think like, oh, this one's slow. Phoenix this year is sixth in pace. San Antonio is fourth. This game is going to be a sneaky fantasy game because I think it could be a track meet. This is going to play really, really fast. All right, so on Phoenix, no injury news that matters. We just know that Kaminsky's out for an extended amount of time. That does not matter so long as Aiton is in. And at this point, I don't really think that I'm changing anybody's minutes. Sherman, safe travels. Uh, not entirely sure, Cantor. Can't be too much. I mean, it's not like eight and slowing them down, but like Frank Kaminsky's running the floor. Hold him, King. What do you mean? Yeah, I don't have anything to change for Phoenix. We know Phoenix's rotation. San Antonio, I probably have stuff to change. So San Antonio is just what we know. Nobody is out. Hurdle returned on Thursday. They were off Friday, Saturday, Sunday for reasons. I don't know. No idea how many minutes Yaka Pirtle is going to play, but you have to assume it's slightly more than that. I'm going to give him 26 again. Uh, they didn't. They immediately removed Thad once again, so I'm going to do the same thing. So we're going to go 26, 22 for Pirtle and Eubanks. Yeah. Sherman, I hope your daughter has a great day today. Trey Jones seems fine, but we will... Actually, no, that's just fine. Did I over-project Phoenix by a minute? Based on what I see, it seems like I did. So, take that minute away. Go back to San Antonio. Uh, Adele Gallardo, uh, Thad Young is not standing out. He's standing out in that he is not, ex I, I don't expect him to be in this game at all. <laughs> uh, hold him king, sort of. It's just baked into the total. It doesn't change any of my individual statistics. The total runs everything. 34 for DeJounte. Yeah, I don't. I mean, this is pretty just smooth. The Like the Lonnie Walker, Devin Vassell, Bryn Forbes minutes are always going to be complicated. I don't really see any changes that I want to make here. Other than maybe like softening Keldon Johnson. So this will work. Man, 30 minutes of Derek White just is too many minutes, apparently. Ooh, Apple Watch is charged. 
Let's get, take him to 29, just so I can not get all of the Derek White for like the 10th straight day. There we go. Watch on. All right, so we've got San Antonio. We've got Phoenix. On the Phoenix side, again, six-point favorites in San Antonio. Thomas, I had a great weekend. I hope you did as well. Uh, Devin Booker on FanDuel is 7,900. DeAndre Ayton, 7,700 and 7,100. Both of those prices seem fine. I wouldn't mind falling into more San Antonio or Phoenix today just because, but they're not really... Nobody's really grading out all that well. Uh, DeJounte Murray, 9,200 on DK. That's a pretty good price tag. Keldon Johnson for 5,900 there is a decent price tag. I think we're going to see some optimal lineups that are pretty gnarly. It's not an easy slate. There's not a lot of value out there. FanDuel in particular looks really difficult. I'm kind of glad that I'm not going to be around for it today. Because this one seems like a tough one to parse. For Memphis... They are 10-point underdogs in Utah. Dylan Brooks is doubtful. Uh, that's probably a good thing for Memphis and for other fantasy guys for Memphis. DeAnthony Melton also out. So there's a lot of minutes to go around here for this Memphis team, and we should see Jaws' usage rate climb back up a little bit too. So we had no Dylan Brooks and we had no DeAnthony Melton on Saturday. I need to see who started that game because I don't have a damn clue. They got beat by 44, 43. Bain, Morant, Adams, Jackson, slow-mo. Okay, so we'll assume slow-mo is in there again. 26 minutes for Steven Adams. Sure. Um, 29 for Jaron Jackson Jr. I mean, that's going to be a goal. Brandon Clark in for 15. I got slow-mo in for quite a bit. Zaire Williams is going to need more time. I think he plays like 20. Bain feels like 30 just has to happen. I think Morant being in for 35 is fine. Maybe we see Tyus play a couple more minutes alongside... And we get John Conchar in. Ooh, yeah, maybe. I guess Tillman might play then, too, because he did play Saturday. So if we take those 18 minutes and give him the Tillman, that gets him up to 29. We get slow mo up to 28. And that concludes our rotation for this evening. That's 240. We're probably going to bump. Actually, you know, Jaw's ja rates look fine. Everybody's rates sort of look fine right now. I will bump Desmond Bain up a little bit further because he's had a higher usage rate this year than he had previously. Everything else should be fine here, though. Utah, come on. Everybody in for the Utah Jazz. Everybody in for the Utah Jazz. Good deal. So, yeah, Rudy Gay was in. Eric Pascal out of the rotation. I have no changes to make for Utah. It's the same rotation as usual. Memphis. Wow, I expected Ja to look better, and he just does not. Which means that I need to look this up to see how much I actually do need to change his usage rate. Because I believe it needs to be a lot higher than whatever I have in there. If I take... Dylan Brooks off this year. Ja is at a 33.5% usage rate. That's a good bump. 10% assist rate. Jaron Jackson's at 24.5. Slow mo, 16.5. Steven Adams will go 14.5. Bain, 21. So that's probably a little bit better for Memphis. Not really changing much though. I think slow-mo, 5K on FanDuel, 4,400 on DraftKings is the best play from Memphis. And on Utah, we know what we're doing here. Donovan Mitchell, 
Love him across both sites. Adam and I will certainly be talking about him on the strategy show. 8,300 and 8,500. One of my favorite plays of the day. Might actually be the top play of the day. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, Gobert, I think, looks really good in the eights in this spot. As does $5,700 on DraftKings' Mike Conley. Final game. Late night hammer. Philly. Two and a half point underdogs at Sacramento. I have no idea who's healthy for Philly. Not Danny Green, not Joel Embiid. Q tag on Tobias Harris. Yikes. Not what they're looking for here. Let's um probably just assuming close to the same rotations as before. Andre Drummond's minutes have gone down precipitously. Matisse Thibel is back. So let's start this rotation over again. We're going to go to... I'm going to say 29 minutes for Andre Drummond. Charles Bassey plays some backup run. And then we'll say George Niang gets the other minutes. He's played almost 30 over the last four. There are no other changes to make here for him. So I'm actually going to give him 30 minutes. Uh, Maxi seems to have settled back into the 36 minute range. Tobias Harris, I think 34 has to be just the baseline. Shake Milton's minutes are all over the place. We know Matisse Thibel is probably playing like 22 minutes again. We get Korkmaz in for 22. Seth Curry in for an easy 34, and that leaves me 19 for Shake Milton. Boom. I know I don't have to change any rates. That one is set in stone. So, did I give Niang the usage? Yeah, I did. Sacramento is the final option. This will be not Luke Walton. Everybody healthy. And this becomes really, really wild. Because this is a different coach. I'm not... I don't really think I need to make any changes here. Bagley left the rotation this last time out. They finally went back to Len. I'm going to leave it in as Tristan Thompson. I'm going to assume that Marvin Bagley does play. Uh, I don't really see what else we can do here. Metu's minutes might be a little too high. But I have a sneaky suspicion we don't really know what we're about to get into. Harkless started on Saturday. I don't we don't really know what the rotation is gonna be. We really, really don't. So I, I can't really make any changes here. So as, as we look at this final game, we've got Philly, Tobias Harris on FanDuel. Again, I, I just want a lot of him. DraftKings at 8,100 is fine. I think Maxi for 7,400 on DraftKings looks good. I think Seth Curry for 4,900 on DraftKings looks good. I'm still willing to play Andre Drummond across both sites. It's all a little wild, but... What is important is that we have 200 viewers here. If you are in here and you haven't hit the like button yet, please do so. It would help me out a ton. I love seeing it. But now it's time to run some crunches. And that's what everybody's here for. Hit the like for optimals and power rankings. FanDuel, first one up. The crunch is on. Optimal lineups are as follows. Donovan Mitchell, De'Aaron Fox, Anthony Edwards, Josh Hart, Brandon Ingram, Tobias Harris, Bobby Portis, Wendell Carter, and Chimetsi Metu. Yikes. I'm okay with it, but it is not fun to look at. So, also, interesting piece here. Met Metu is something we want to pay attention to. Uh... Luke Walt, I believe it was Luke Walton that came out and said it. I assume it was. Said that Metu was going to get a five-game trial as a starter. If you can see it on the screen, one, two, three, four, five. That's Metu's five games. 
and we have a new coach. So it is very possible that Shimetsi Metu is not in this starting lineup today and that they go back to potentially Mo Harkless or someone else. So this can change pretty dramatically by the time we get to lock. So much so that I'm going to take a minute away from Metu right now so that he does not show up as good of a play. Because I don't think that he's going to be there when push comes to shove. And I think he's actually going to fall out of this optimal right now when I rerun it. Yeah, so optimal lineup by three-tenths of a point. Mitchell, Levine, Hart, Herder, Ingram, Tobias Harris, Wendell Carter Jr., Slow-Mo, Joval. Three Pelicans, but it's really the only three Pelicans that you could roster, too. Power rankings on FanDuel. This is where it'll probably get pretty interesting. I just don't have the feel for it right now. You know it's a weird slate when Wendell Carter Jr. is showing up at the top of the power rankings on FanDuel and I didn't even like think about the fact that he could be there. It's craziness. Do I have him like wildly over projected? 1.14 fantasy points per minute. Is that too much? Seems it. Just going to have to work for right now. All right. Wendell Carter Jr., Tobias Harris, Josh Hart, De'Aaron Fox, Zach Levine, Kevin Herter, Donovan Mitchell, Anthony Edwards, Ingram. All of those guys are north of 15%. That's going to be my cutoff, but power rankings on FanDuel. FanDuel pricing today, very, very difficult. Maybe the most difficult that it's been all of this season. I think it's I think it is a very difficult pricing slate on FanDuel today. DraftKings looked really tough, so I think what we're going to see someone like like a Jared Vanderbilt or something showing up in here because I don't know how much value we actually have. Here's the optimal lineup on DK. Donovan Mitchell. Cam, all right, so Cam Reddish is that sort of spot. Mitchell, Reddish, Herder, Wendell Carter Jr., Gobert, Edwards, Ingram, slow-mo you can pivot off of that lineup by four tenths of a point turn reddish into franz wagner and rudy gobert into De'Aaron fox also very very difficult day i'm Honestly, pretty happy that I'm not playing tonight. We got to take a look at Wendell Carter Jr.'s rates. He's going to be a good play today, one way or the other, but he's becoming a problem. And we need to figure out why. So Wendell Carter Jr., 471 minutes, 19% usage rate. So let's start there. That's exactly where I have him. 19.5, 19.3. That's no different. Assist rate at four, offensive rebounding rate, rebounding rate. All of that is fine. He must have terrible true shooting this year. Wendell Carter Jr., true shooting 59%. So even that's not too bad. It, it's got to be a minutes question, I guess. But I think that he plays 30 in a competitive game. I don't... It's possible he's just not blocking shots as frequently. But when this is a competitive game, I think they want Wendell Carter Jr. playing 30 minutes. Yeah, Bob, I don't judge people based on the score of the, they had in fantasy for their past two games. That's a great way to lose a lot of money, though. You should move forward with that theory. I mean, Carter's been at 1.06 fantasy points per minute this year. That's, you know, 32 and a half at 30 minutes. 
Orlando is relatively fast. Milwaukee is, you know, they're both above average pace teams. I'm just going to take one minute away from him just to soften that, but it, like he tumbled a little bit on DraftKings. So we got Josh Hart, Donovan Mitchell, Kevin Herter, De'Aaron Fox, Wendell Carter Jr., Anthony Edwards, Bogdan Bogdanovich. Bob, I'll bet you any amount of money in the world, any amount whatsoever, that Wendell Carter Jr. scores more than 20 fantasy points. You name the stakes, I will I will make the bet. That's one of the worst things I've ever seen. So any amount at all. Any amount. I have a sneaky suspicion you're going to say a number that's way lower than what I want it to be. Even if we think that I'm mildly heavy on Wendell Carter Jr., I don't think it's possible to project him lower than 30 fantasy points. 30. You are off by 10. <laughs> legitimate. There's no legitimate way to project Wendell Carter for less than 30 fantasy points. <laughs> Bots can't bet. That's a good point. Alrighty, guys. I think we got this one in the books. I feel bad. Bob's going to lose a lot of money tonight. And unfortunately, I think that's going to happen on uh, on a daily basis moving forward. But I'm sorry, Bob. Being broke must suck. Yeah, I don't know about Shen Goon today on that one, William. All right, I took that minute away from him. That really softens the blow on FanDuel. The, here, here's the real problem on FanDuel. There is no real value. And that makes every single minute so much more important to most of these guys. That's really where the breakdown happens. Well, there's your problem, Bob. Also, no one plays 2,000 lineups. <laughs> so, there's also that. But, yeah, I will... Uh, I will bet any amount of money on the planet that Mo Bomb or that Wendell Carter Jr. scores more than 20 fantasy points. Let's just say, for example, we look at this. So, where where do I know that I have that? Summary? No. No. All right, it'll be fine here. All right, so Wendell Carter Jr. is projected for, for me at least... We'll say 32.7. I think that's Wendell Carter Jr.'s line, right? No, that's Bamba. Wendell Carter Jr.'s projection. So we're going to say 33 fantasy points. We want to know how often he hits 20 with a standard deviation of 6. Boop. Yeah. 98% of the time. <laughs> Uh, if you knew he played 29 minutes, him getting 20 is basically a guarantee. It's insane. All righty, guys. Bang, we done. All right, so as I mentioned, leading this one off, nothing from me coming up tonight. When I'm done in the strategy show, uh, that's it for me today. Uh, family is in town, and we're doing a, a dueling birthday dinner tonight. Not for me, but uh, for people in the fam. So I'm going to be away for tonight. No updates. Apologies for that. 
We'll have the process show every day this week, except for Thanksgiving, because there's no basketball. Uh, there are, I think, 13 games on Wednesday's slate, which is brutal. Um, but yeah, no basketball on Thursday, so no process show on Thursday. We are doing NFL coverage, so make sure you're watching that. Shout out to Prize Picks for being the presenting sponsor. But we're back tomorrow, full day too. Uh, you get process, you get um, uh, contenders videos, strategy show, and then I'm on live before lock. So we got a long one tomorrow. <clears throat> we'll have a long one Wednesday, but I'm not on live before lock. And then Friday morning after Thanksgiving. Everybody better be here with your leftover turkey sandwiches and whatever else you want because uh, we're going to be here 6.30 a.m. Friday after uh, after Thanksgiving. Can I do the process for NFL on Thursday? Absolutely not. Um, I would rather not talk about the NFL again. <laughs> so the last thing that I'm going to do is a process for it. But I will have a uh, full Thanksgiving slate contenders video out probably Wednesday afternoon and then thursday strategy show in the morning that's it guys i'm off to record contenders and nfl contenders and prep for the strategy show so thank you guys for everything hit that like button i'm out of here